If I'm carrying a sheet of plywood in the wind so that the wind is coming in this direction with some general velocity of capital U, say, and I orient the sheet of plywood this way, then there's very little force from that wind acting on this sheet of plywood and I can probably carry it and move it this way fairly easily. There'll be friction on the surface due to viscous drag and there'll be a thin boundary layer here on both edges of that that piece of plywood where the airflow is slowed down because of the viscous friction. And that's called the boundary layer. And if you zoom in, the velocity distribution on that surface will look something like this. Zero down at the surface of the piece of plywood, going up to a magnitude of capital U up here at the outside edge of the boundary layer. So we've got friction going on here. On the other hand, you've probably had the experience of getting it out of alignment with the wind. And in the extreme case, if I wound up putting it straight across the wind like that, then that piece of plywood in that wind is going to have a high pressure on this side and a lower pressure on this side. And the flow is going to go around it and swirl around something like this, and that's going to be the cause of that low pressure. So the fluid inertia, the fluid has to slow down and go around. There has to be a higher pressure to push it around the edges, and the pressure is going to be something more like atmospheric pressure back in here. So the low pressure that we had there. This is mostly inertia that's doing this. This is all about having to push the fluid out of the way. Now, when we refer to two types of drag, in this case, the drag is almost all skin friction. That's the boundary layer effects that are going on here and, uh, and the shear stress that's happening down here right at the wall that's causing some friction there. And in this case, it's fairly small from a practical point of view. This one, our drag is primarily inertial, and we usually refer to that as pressure drag, because of the higher pressure on the front and lower pressure on the back. Now, in most practical situations, we don't have either a really skinny flat plate parallel to the flow or perpendicular to the flow. We have things more like golf balls or volleyballs, or baseballs, or basketballs, or cars, or aircraft, or whatever. And typically, if we've got the velocity coming along here, yes, up here we will see a boundary layer that's formed as the flow comes up and around here. We'll also see separation and possibly vortex shedding back in here we'll have a region of high pressure and a region of lower pressure on the back. Higher pressure again adds push to that that object creates some drag so in this case the drag is a combination of pressure and skin friction. And it's almost always this sort of a case where the, there's a combination of both the skin friction, which makes an important contribution, so the surface finish is important to reduce that friction, and this pressure drag that occurs primarily due to the separation into a wake region in behind. So whether we're looking at a car or a basketball or, or a person standing out in the wind, they'll all have some combination of pressure drag and skin friction drag. If we're looking at a highly streamlined object like an airfoil, mostly skin friction,
it depends on the shear stress all along these surfaces here. So it depends primarily on the area of the outside of the, uh, the wing or whatever the streamlined body is. On the other hand, if it's something like this uh, sphere or, or a cube sitting out in the flow, the flow is coming this way, there will be a significant recirculation zone back in here. It's mostly pressure drag. And it's mostly dependent on the size of this area out here that that pressure acts on. So the shear stress is acting on this surface that's producing skin friction drag, or the pressure is acting on this surface, the projected area, towards the flow. And that's leading to the pressure drag. And if we look at a graph of drag coefficient versus Reynolds number, whether it's for a sphere or a sphere or a cube or any other bluff body which is the term that we use for things that aren't streamlined what we'll see is a drag coefficient that drops down and down and levels off as we get to a point where this wake is fully developed and sometimes we'll see some other behavior further out here in changing in changing this in this region here at low Reynolds numbers, that's where we're dominated by skin friction. And as we increase in Reynolds number, here we're starting to get into bluff body pressure dominated drag. So I hope that clears up the mechanisms. We can talk in a lot more detail about the actual math of how to figure out drag forces.